All right. This video is going to be about uh, the intro paragraph of our research paper. And then we will also talk a little bit about topic sentences, which would be the first sentence in the body paragraph. So uh, notice my meme game is on point per usual. So enjoy those along the way. But I'm going to talk you through the instruction. And hopefully by the end, you'll have a better idea of what, what to expect when you're writing your intro paragraph for this particular research paper. It'll also apply pretty well to research papers that you would write in other settings in the future. All right, so a very simple way to think of this is the acronym ACTS, A-C-T-S, um, for our introduction paragraph, meaning there would just be four parts where we would uh, be looking to explain what's going on, what our argument is, and so forth. Uh, so the A would stand for attention getter, C, connector, T, thesis, and then S, summary. So the attention getter, the A or the beginning of your introduction paragraph. Usually somewhere between two and four sentences. Um, in this area, some people will use I or you, so using first or second person. Um, this is kind of a, a, a little bit of a more commonly uh, casual area of the paper, if you will. Uh, so the attention getter, really there's a bunch of different things you can do here, uh, which are numbered below. You can possibly introduce a personal story of some sort. Uh, I think this is, this could be really effective, especially if you're someone whose topic does relate to you in a very real way. Um, so that's going to do really a good job of explaining how not only the topic is relevant in general, but also that you're an expert on this topic because of your connection to it. Um, you could choose to do a real situation or story, so not something that's happened to you, but still something that is very real um, to kind of draw people in and help them see how this, this uh, applies to the real world. Uh, you could do a personal philosophy or personal thoughts. And then background information, so maybe starting with a, a jaw-dropping fact or stat. Um, usually if we're trying to do something like that, you want it to be something that's really, really eye-catching, something that's going to be almost hard to believe just based on how amazing this, this fact or stat would be. Um, and then another potential successful attention getter would be a hypothetical situation. So something that you make up where uh, this leads into the the argument of your paper, all right? So any of these five will do. Uh, it'll make your writing awesome, like Neil over here has to say. So let's accept that challenge and dive a little deeper into those. Uh, the background or the history works well for literary analysis, so that's not what this is, but that can be useful in some instances, especially with literary analysis where you're you're breaking down um, and giving giving a personal view on a text. You can provide a general synopsis or overview of a story, a book or a play that you're writing about. Um, for non-literary papers, so that would be this, you could provide general information about your topic, give an interesting fact, stat, history of the topic. So kind of a progressive thing if we're talking about the history, how did it lead into today? Um, an antidote or a real story or a situation news story. So here you would just be finding a real life story, a narrative works as well, um, that relates to your topic. Use famous or not so famous stories from the news, television, or magazines. So what I mean by that is obviously everyone loves a good famous story. And if it's famous and well known, it's obviously going to be pretty relevant because people recognize it, right? But sometimes a not so famous story can carry just as much clout, um, something that people haven't heard of before where they're learning something new. Oftentimes, if this, this unfamiliar story has something shocking in it, like I said earlier, that might be just as effective, if not more so, because it's going to draw people in due to that unfamiliarity. Um, so really, uh, using actual names, places, dates, that's going to work well for our paper as well, since we are talking about something real, um, a, a current issue in society. So if you can help tie that issue to anything specific that people might recognize, that's going to be uh, a really useful strategy for you. So yes, this is real life. Uh, personal experience. So another one of the five attention getters that we briefly talked about. 
just something that happened in your own life that relates to the topic. Uh, you can also tell a story about someone that you might know, friend, relative, whoever it may be, um, who had an experience that relates to that topic. And then so you have, an, you have a connection to that topic um, through relation of somebody else. So it's not a direct connection, but it is still a very strong connection. Uh, and then it's important to give an honest account of what happened. In this area, you would want to use I and me. Um, so your reader can see that this, this thing happened to you and you are the one writing this paper. So you see that connection and really that desire to, to uh, make your point heard and well known because you, you have that connection and you feel it's important. Uh, personal thoughts, personal philosophy. This is going to give a personal glimpse into what you are all about. Let's the reader know why you think the way you do and relate that to the topic. You would use I for this as well. Um, so really this could be something where you are, you're just explaining your personal thoughts and how you've gotten to that um, or a conviction that you have. So that one oftentimes seems to be a little bit more tough because it's more abstract. Um, and less concrete than the rest of the options, but I've seen some people do it really well. It is something worth pursuing if you're interested in. And then we have the hypothetical situation. So this is more of a creative one. Um, so a hypothetical situation, you're creating a potential scenario where this, this could happen, but it hasn't necessarily happened in this way. Um, it can be with made up people or characters, or you can maybe make it about well, imagine this happens to you or imagine this happens to one of your loved ones um, to help make that situation tie into the reader so they can relate it to their own life. Um, do be sure to to admit up front that this is a hypothetical situation um, just for clarity's sake and for being transparent. But this oftentimes can really get the reader emotionally tied to your paper. Don't ever, 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 never, don't touch it. Don't use a question as an attention getter, all right? Um, that is just a very rudimentary way to begin a paper. Um, you want to provide an answer to a question. You don't want to give another question for people to to ponder. Your your whole job is to answer questions, not not be asking them, okay? You have the answer here. You have the way to persuade them to think a certain way. You don't want them questioning you. You want them to be reading your answer, all right? So that is the A, the attention getter part of ACTS. The C is going to be the connector, the second portion of our paragraph. Typically this area is gonna be three to five sentences or so. Um, this is where you start to get more prof a more professional tone. So you're not gonna be using that personal I or that second person you any longer. You're going to be talking big picture you're going to be using professional language here. Um, so this really is where you're just providing some background information and you're discussing the issue. This is where it starts to get real um, and you start to inform the reader about the topic and its importance, all right? So for example, if I was writing a paper on legalizing recreational marijuana, um, that would be the topic. So I want to make sure I'm introducing the idea of what the paper is about. And then I want to introduce the issue, whether or not it should be legalized. And then uh, soon enough, you'll be making it clear which side of the argument you fall on. So I would not do that here yet. Um, another thing I would probably consider doing is explaining the disagreement over the issue. So we're doing a research paper on something that hasn't been decided and there's no definite answer. Um, so show that right off the bat. Like I said earlier, be transparent. You want people to believe you. You don't want to try and mislead. You want to you want to persuade them with facts, not with confusion. So um, my example here, people have different beliefs regarding, regarding the benefits versus the risks of legalizing a drug that has been illegal for a long period of time. So I'm just saying, hey, this is controversial. Uh, there are two sides to this argument and kind of here's what they are, okay? You don't need to get overly specific here and why people disagree. You just want to make it clear that there is a disagreement. The why is going to come in your body paragraphs with your topic sentences and your evidence 
and you linking those together later on. So you don't want to get super specific here. Um, that that will come later. But do make it clear that there is this is a a black and white issue. There are two different sides to it, and one side has to be chosen. Um, providing any additional context for this is going to be helpful. So uh, perhaps like how has this issue come to the forefront in recent years? Is there a certain a certain incident or a certain case that has led to this being in the news lately or being popular? Um, basically, any any anything recent that you can bring up here to help show that this is a relevant current issue is going to be something you're want to, wanting to include. Showing that it's current and relevant is going to help once again relate it to the reader. Hey, this is real. This is going to happen. You have to pick a side. What are you going to do? Um, and then that really ties in with this point here as well. Um, you need to explain why it's important. You need to make this person buy in. Why do? Why am I going to read the rest of your paper? Well, there's a big problem and you need to decide what's going on and you need to inform yourself because sooner or later there's going to be a decision that's made. And what is that decision going to mean for someone like you? All right. Why is it important? Little rough connection, connector. Pretty good meme. Moving on. Uh, the connector. So the next step of that, once again, we want to state the counter argument or the opposition. So we start to get a little more in depth here. You're addressing the opposite side because the next part that's coming is going to be your thesis where you make your view clear and the reasons for it. So this step, stating the counter argument or the opposition. Um, an example here, if I'm sticking with that legalization uh, concept would be some people think that marijuana is a gateway drug and can be addictive and therefore should not be legalized. So you can see this is an opposition. This is the side that's saying, no, it should not be legalized. And here is a potential reason why. OK, so we're stating we're, we're addressing the counter argument. We're acknowledging that there is another side to this and there might be a very valid reason to it. OK. Um, so here would be a bit of a sample here uh, as far as putting everything together. We'll probably circle back to this in a minute. We'll get into that. Um, but I do want to talk about the thesis statement before I circle back to that. So your thesis statement, if you want to, you can think of it a little bit as a, as a formula. Um, in this formula, we've talked about it before. If you're a student who's, who's been uh, taught the school of Melcon before, um, you have that main idea, the, that, that sentence, okay? So that main idea, or your, in this case, your thesis of your introductory paragraph, you're gonna need a topic, um, in this case, a topic and an issue. So not just like legalization of marijuana in the example case, but also pro or anti, which side are you on, for or against that? So the topic and issue, um, the verb, and then your point or your claim. So this is you you definitively picking the side that you're choosing. And then the focus or essentially your reason why. Why, why is this your point of view? Um, and then your focus or your reasons, those are going to be linked to the topic sentences of your body paragraphs. So this is going to connect to the research that you've done. So um, here is like a, a bit of a color coded uh, sample thesis statement. Uh, in the yellow, we have that topic or the issue. So recreational marijuana should not be legalized in this case, um, in this thesis statement should not be legalized by individual states. So notice my topic, my issue, recreational marijuana. That's the topic. That's the issue at hand. Um, my point and claim. Well, basically um, my position here, it should not be legalized. All right. By individual states. So that's a little more specific of the uh, topic issue. You might have all of that together. Some of it might be divided by the point claim like you see here. That's all right. And then it leads us to our because. Because is going to be an awesome word to get into our focus of our reasons, uh, because that's just a word that links links things together. Because shows cause and effect. Um, so what's the effect? What's our reasons? Because it can negatively impact people's health. One, the environment can negatively impact the environment. Two, and it can cause legal conflicts. Three. All right. So those are my reasons, and those are going to be the topics 
of my body paragraphs in the future. All right. So hopefully we can see this is all one sentence. We're addressing not only what we're talking about, but what side we're on, pro or anti, for or against, and then the reasons why, okay? And once again, just to emphasize, the reasons are going to be uh, the topics of your body paragraph. So you're going to get much more in-depth on each of these things down here in your reasons. Uh, so here it is up here again. These could be some potential um, topics, uh, topic sentences uh, for your body paragraphs, just based on what we see up here. So notice there are lots of different opportunities here, just based on this one simple sentence as to what topics you could be talking about in your body paragraphs. And then just to circle back real quick. So now that I have all three of those pieces, my act or of acts, sorry, my attention getter, the connector, and then the thesis, uh, we can get this whole thing put together here. So at the beginning, it looks like I'm using a um, real life, if you will, but it's, it's real, but it's from a movie. So it's a fake movie, but it's something from real life, a movie that we've seen. So whether it's from Fast Times at Ridgemont High oh, or from Half Baked, so these are um, movies, shows, or uh, movies or shows, American society is all too familiar with the classic stoner character. So notice we're, we're getting into that idea of, of the drug here, okay? These characters are often depicted with numerous comedic one-liners and an array of silly behavior, all caused by being under the influence of a marijuana high. So notice my attention getter is more than one sentence. These are both connected here. Um, however, Americans are beginning to realize that this portrayal of marijuana's effects is certainly one-dimensional, and in fact, recent studies have even highlighted the benefits of marijuana use. So, this is where I'm starting to get, in, get into my connector. I'm starting to get serious. I'm starting to introduce the various aspects of the topic here. Today, Americans often debate whether recreational marijuana should be legalized. So we're starting to say, all right, here's the, here's the issue at hand here. Here's what this paper is going to be about. Uh, notice, debate, that means there's two different sides. So I'm addressing that there is a, there is a issue, a problem, an argument going on. Some argue that marijuana is a gateway drug and is still addictive and therefore should not be legalized. That's going to be addressing the counterclaim here. They are against the legalization of it. And here's a, a couple of reasons why it should not be legalized. However, and we're getting to the thesis here, recreational marijuana should be legalized because it offers numerous advantages such as its medical, economic, and personal benefits. All right. So notice I got my, my topic here, recreational marijuana. I have my, my uh, position or my, uh, my stance should be legalized. So I'm, I'm taking a side on the topic. And then because I'm getting to my focus of my reasons here, because it offers numerous advantages, such as medical, economic, and one more, oh, personal. All right. So those are three topics that I'm going to be addressing in topic sentences and body paragraphs in the future, the medical benefits, the economic benefits, and the personal benefits. All right. So that is just a sample introductory paragraph for a potential research paper with all those three parts. Um, so uh, eventually you're going to be trying this on your own. Just remember, uh, if you're breaking it down from that Melcon perspective, the topic, verb, position, reason, that topic issue is going to go in the topic. What is the issue at hand that you're going to be talking about? That verb is just a, you know, an action word that connects everything together just something that's going to come naturally within the sentence. Uh, your position is going to be your point or your claim. So which side of the issue are you taking? And then your reason is going to be your focus. Um, the reasons and the main ideas, the topic sentences for your body paragraphs in the future. All right. So I totally believe that you can do this on your own. Here are a few examples before we go. Um, you want to start a topic sentence with a transition because it's the first sentence in a new paragraph. So it shows you're transitioning from an old topic into a new one. Um, those are highlighted in yellow. So that's going to be going at the beginning of your topic sentence. Uh, after that, 
you have your topic, your topic itself. All right. So this is something that you were taking from the focus and or the reasoning in your uh, thesis statement. All right. So each one of these things can be tra each one of these things in green can be traced back to the reasons given in the thesis statement. And then after that, you're giving a, another focus. Once again, a reason. OK, you're explaining why or how. Um, and that can be seen in purple. So if you need to pause this video to take a further look at those and how those are how those are broken out, they just follow that formula of a transitional phrase, um, stating a topic, and then giving a reason to support the re the the topic itself. After that, you're going to be writing, um, integrating some quotes into your paragraph, and then you're obviously going to explain how that quote goes back to this topic sentence. Uh, and explain how not only it proves the topic, but how it connects to that reason of the focus as well. That is all I have for you. So some of the things that we covered today are going to be um, the writing of the introductory paragraph and the little formula of how to successfully organize and go about it, starting with a bit of an attention getter and the five different ways that you can successfully accomplish that. Um, moving on to the connector, where we start to start to orient the reader um, using our professional language to introduce the topic itself, um, showing that it is a current and relevant issue and that there are multiple sides to it. And then finally introducing a, a beginning of a counterclaim, showing the opposition um, and some reasons behind that before we get to our T, the thesis, uh, where we have our topic, verb, position, reason, um, explaining all of the the thesis and the points that we will be making throughout the paper to support it. So that is what we covered today. If you have questions, let your teacher know. Otherwise, um, happy writing, good luck, and thanks for watching.